Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Discover new strategies and tactics as Susan Solovic interviews today's top business leaders and entrepreneurs to reveal their stories and insights. Now, the host of the 1% Edge, the small business expert, Susan Solovic. And hello, and yes, I am Susan Solovic, and you are listening to the 1% Edge podcast. Let me ask you a question. Work-life balance. Is it a myth or is it a reality? I mean, I think you have to admit we are living in a crazy, fast-paced world these days. And, you know, technology gives us all a huge advantage when we're running our businesses because we can be more productive. We don't have to be tethered to our desk. We can do business really anywhere at any time. And then all of a sudden the reality hits. And my gosh, work is consuming our lives. There aren't any lines anymore. You're working 24-7. Even if you aren't the leader of your own business, you're still working 24-7. It consumes you because we're always available thanks to, I guess, thanks, thanks to technology. But despite these encroachments on our personal lives, my guest today says that You know, we can really get this under control. It really is about us. Joining me is Jeff Davidson. And by the way, he has written 65 books. This is a guy who takes his work seriously. Uh, His top 10 last, or his latest books, I guess I should say, are things like Getting Things Done, Winning Back Your Time, that's what I'd like to learn about, Accomplishing Your Goals, and so on and so forth. And we're going to give you a link to his website and, and his books later on in the program. But right now, Jeff, I just want to say thanks for being here. My pleasure. Great. Um, you know, you say that basically all of us, if we're employed, working, uh, running a business, or we're a solopreneur, that basically, I mean, things are just out of control. We're overwhelmed with information and communication overload. So how do we get to this point, Jeff? We have to look at it historically, and it's not hard to understand that obviously before the internet, the volume of information to which we were exposed on a daily basis was nothing by comparison with today. But just to give all the audience members a perspective, in a single second on Earth, a single second, more information today is newly generated, in other words, becomes newly available, than a person could ingest at normal reading and viewing and intake speeds in the rest of his or her life. So said another way, every second on earth, more than 80 years worth of new information becomes newly available. Then it repeats in the next second and the next and the next. After a minute, an hour, a day, oh my goodness. So what that tells us right off the bat is nobody should ever try to keep up with it all because it is humanly beyond impossible. But what we can do is make better choices as to where we give our time and attention. So how do we do that, though? I mean, I, I'm guilty of that. I see these things, and I, I print things off my computer and think, oh, I have to read this, and I have to get that book, and I need to learn how to do this. I mean, how do you get it under control? How do you choose? Welcome to the club. We're all little information switchboards today. We sit behind our keyboard or our smartphone, and we connect with the world. We visit whatever we want. We gather information, and that's wonderful. But we also have to understand that in a world where information can be gathered in droves in very short order, we have to sometimes say, hey, it was interesting at the time, but I'm going to let this go because other things are of higher value. Do you know studies show that of all the recordings, the video recordings, the DVR recordings that people make, about 60 to 70 percent of them are never watched? So we're over collecting. Once we understand that, we should be gentle with ourselves and say, okay, I'm going to let this go because other things have now emerged that merit my attention. And, you know, honestly, I mean, I get it stacked up, right? And then about once a year I go through it and it is kind of... uh, Feel, it makes you feel good to start throwing that stuff away and letting it go. So <laughs> I, I understand that. Um, 
I also find, and I'm sure a lot of all of you listening today are the same way, that I get interrupted a lot during the day. And my husband says I have ADD. I don't have ADD. But, you know, I'm multitasking. I'm doing one thing. I'm doing another. And then an email comes in or uh, a text message, and I feel compelled to respond. Um, how, do you, how do you deal with that? Is that affecting our ability to balance things? And it seems like we're constantly interrupted and putting out fires. That is so true, and we are the first generation, really, in the history of the Earth to be able to be subjected to all this information 24-7. And so we have to have personal filters in place. We have to make our own rules and say, for example, I am not going to switch on my smartphone the first thing when I get up in the morning. I'm going to give myself 15 minutes. Or there's a time in the evening at which I'm not going to be checking for messages. Um, 8 to 10 or whatever happens to be in the evening is going to be a free zone, an information-free zone. Then triage also comes into play. Most of what we receive we can delete. Much of it we can delegate. Some we should act on right now. And then a lot we can park in folders and files for the future because we don't have to deal with it right now. So those four categories, delete, delegate, act on, and file, will help enormously. That's, I like that. I tell you, I was guilty of that. I'm getting much, much better. Like if something came in, I think, oh, I've got to get to this right now. And I realized, well, wait a minute, there's no sense of urgency here. It can wait until later in the day or even tomorrow. So, And that's particularly true when I'm traveling because that gets into time crunches. And I figure, you know what, it can just wait until I get back to my office. And so I guess that wisdom comes with age, right? So, Jeff, you also have uh, um, something you call a breathing space process. And that sounds so good to me. It just like... <gasps> Oh, just let it out. Tell us how the breathing space process works. Well, just from a very um, basic standpoint, you always get to go to sleep at the end of the day. All right? You always get to get up and have a decent breakfast. You get to take a shower. You get to relax at least for a minute or two here and there. I don't care how hectic your day is. Suppose you have two entrepreneurs in your 1% club. Suppose that both of them work on average a 10-hour day. Maybe that's a short day. Maybe it should be 11 or 12 compared to what they're really doing. But let's use 10 as a base. One takes 10 strategic 60-second breaks throughout the day. The other goes right through 10 hours straight. Who all other things being equal is going to be more effective. Well, the person who gives themselves 10 one-minute strategic breaks, whether it's to take a breath, to sip some water, to stretch, to look out the window, to get up and just roll your shoulders, whatever it happens to be, a few strategic minutes or breathing space minutes, if you will, throughout the day will make a dramatic difference, not only in that day, but the next and the next and the next if you keep doing it. I also have read where if you get up and just take a little walk around the, if it's just even your office or around the block or something, that that's really good to get your creative juices flowing again. No question about it. And it's fa as a matter of fact, any physical activity, hard or soft, to begin the day is going to help you focus more when you do turn your attention to business. That's great. Um, is there anything we can do to train ourselves or discipline ourselves to keep from getting that big pile of information in our office and you know feeling that overwhelmed feeling? Absolutely. First, if we have any employees whatsoever, take the most junior person on your staff and give him or her all of the spam and junk mail and things that you've received, the catalogs that you don't want, one felt swoop, design a form letter, send out to everyone and say, please take me off the list, let's save a tree. So you get rid of the hard copy stuff. Now, you also develop a discipline and say, I am going to focus on the key things today that matter. There might be three or four of them. These others I'm going to get to, but I'm not going to let them into my intellectual periphery, if you will, 
for now. And if you keep focusing on what's more important, what happens in the end is a lot of times some of those other things take care of themselves. You mentioned the piles that pile up in your office and in your life. Well, the good news about piles, if there is good news, is sometimes when you wait two, three weeks or a month or two, you get back to some of those items, it's taking care of itself. It either is no longer of interest, it's no longer of value, the time has passed. You now look at it with new eyes and say, no, not for me. So a lot of times the delay can be a benefit. So um, you, you also, well, let me, before I ask you this next question, um, I actually, the coming up soon is National Notebook Day. And I still, believe it or not, carry around a notebook where I write down my list of things to do, right? And I mark them off. I mean, to me, there's like that sense of completion. So you talk about the power of completions. Uh, is that sort of what you mean when you talk about that? It's exactly what I mean. And whether you use a notebook or a laptop or a tablet or smartphone, the medium doesn't matter as long as it works for you. Paper, to this day, is still a medium that has value. You can drop it and it won't break. You can fold it. You can put it in your pocket. You can write on it. You can write over it and so on. So I'm not, never going to knock anybody's system for getting things done as long as the system propels you forward. Absolutely. And in terms of completions, when you cross something out, psychologically, that is a benefit to you because now you're freed up, you have more focus, direction, and energy for what comes next. I even suggest to people, Susan, if you can believe this, I suggest to people that when they accomplish something that wasn't on the list, they write it down and then cross it off just so they can get that completion. Well, you know, that's something that makes sense to me because it's visual. You've got it down there and you marked it off even though it wasn't on your original list. You get psychic, you get psychic credit, exactly. Right. And the one percenters love to get psychic credit because they're handling so many things, big and small. And it makes a difference when you look back on your list and say, wow, I knocked out this and this and this. That's small and this is big, but I did it. And then you go on to what's next and you feel great. So, Jeff, how, how did you learn all of this? I mean, do you apply all these things to your life and your business as well? Every, every darn day. And the answer how, how did I get to this stage? Trial and error over decades. And what happened was, as I was speaking to groups, I've spoken to 980 groups now, as I was speaking to groups and people would come up to me with their issues and their problems, I'd read the surveys and we take little polls and stuff. Over the years, I honed and refined some of these systems. I got good ideas from people or I saw the way. And then pretty soon, uh, what happens, you know, well, I say soon, 10 years or more, but within a decade or so, you get to a point where you're saying, hey, this is a pretty good body of information that works for most career professionals, be they entrepreneurs, corporate executives, newbies within a firm, seniors about to retire. And so by and by, you get to answer just like all the answers you have for your people. Um, yeah, so what would be your best piece of advice for someone who's really struggling right now? The art. Master the art of doing one thing at a time. One thing at a time. As simple as this sounds, that is the key to high productivity because if you will give your all, just like we're giving our all on this broadcast, and we're done, we'll turn to what's next. But right now, we're not doodling. We're not looking out the window. We're not thinking about what's we're not, next. We're not texting and checking Facebook. We're, <laughs> exactly. We're giving it our all. And when we're done, we'll be complete and we can turn to what's next. For entrepreneurs who have a never-ending stream of tasks, be it with customers, employees, uh, instruction manuals, new vendors, financing, productivity, what have you, give it your all. And then and only then turn to the next task. But if you try to juggle six things at the same time, well, it might be psychologically satisfying in the short run. Look at me, I'm juggling this and that, aren't I something? 
But the fastest and easiest way to get through six tasks or any list of tasks is to take the most important one, go as far as you possibly can, completion if you can, then and only then go to two, three, and so on. Great, great advice. Now, you have an offer that you want to tell our listeners about, and that is um, you've got the book, The 60 Self- Second Self Starter, and you've got 12 accompanying audio video programs on high productivity. Tell us about that offer. Uh, the 60 Second Self Starter is a book that entrepreneurs will love. There are 60 tips, each of which can be read in about 60 to 120 seconds. And you don't have to read the book sequentially. You can open it any place, any place, and you'll get some ideas on how to get started. If you feel a little stuck, a little, little bit in a rut, you want to jump over some barrier, some hurdle, and it's light. You can put it in your vest pocket, about 140 pages. You can't go wrong with this book. It actually has sold more in Japan and China than it has here. Wow. That's amazing. Well, you know, and and honestly, I think that's a great idea because I always tell people that, you know, when they want to do something, like, let's say they want to write a book. You and I have both written books. And I'm like, you know, well, that idea of going around in there in your head is not going to get it done. You have to just do it, right? You have to start. That's right. I love the title of your book. Tell everybody again. So it's the 1% Edge, Small Changes That Create uh, or Guarantee Relevancy and Sustain Success. That's right. Small changes in evolution have made a huge difference. 1% here, 1% there makes all the difference. Doesn't it? It really does. Well, Jeff, I know that you've helped a lot of people. I hope that they've listened to your great advice and that they will employ some of these strategies that you've suggested here. I'm going to try to do a better job. I'll report back into you. How's that? (laughs) Sounds good, but... I read your newsletter religiously, and you're already doing a great job. Well, thanks, Jeff. All right, thanks for being here. And, of course, we'll link you to uh, Jeff's offer here and to his website, and you'll want to check out some of his books. They're really helpful and really great. He knows his stuff. And thanks to all of you for joining the 1% Edge podcast. This is the program where I bring you the best of the best so you can be the best. And I'm Susan Solovic. Join us again next week for the 1% Edge podcast. Thanks for listening to The 1% Edge. If you found these insights and tips helpful, be sure to hit the subscribe button on your podcast player and leave a review in iTunes to help others discover The 1% Edge.